Have you ever wondered how some of the best breads in the world are made of these simplest ingredients? Such as the traditional artisan breads like baguette, ciabatta, or just a simple boule. When done right, they're creamy, crusty, complex in flavor and aroma, and absolutely yummy. But all of these breads are only made of four ingredients. Flour, water, yeast, and salt. Excluding salt, these are all quite bland and flavorless ingredients to start with. And yet somehow, they are eventually made into incredibly delicious pieces of bread. So what's going on? What process did these breads go through? Well, one of the crucial steps every seasoned baker knows is the long and slow fermentation. In the world of artisan bread, you can be the greatest master of kneading, meticulously selecting the finest ingredients to go along with the best tools you have. But in the end, you still have to leave the dough be to eventually slowly develop the flavor and the aroma that we're seeking. And in search of those excellent tastes, artisan bakers use poolish or any type of pre-ferment for that matter, along with purposely using reduced amounts of instant yeast or using slow fermenting natural yeast, such as fruit yeast water, sourdough, old dough, to name just a few. All of these approaches indirectly require long fermentation periods in the process that may include extended bulk fermentation time or placing the dough in the fridge to slow down the activity of the yeast. Of course, modern commercial processes used in large bakeries have a totally different approach for the obvious reason of saving time and maximizing efficiency. Long fermentation is out of the question. So to make up for the lack of aroma and flavor, fat emulsifier, vitamin C, and enzymes are added into the mix. And to that mix, preservatives are added to make the bread last longer. To many, this is not what they want. So slow fermented bread is still highly sought after. But what is it exactly about this long fermentation that makes bread so much better? And what's the best way to go about it? At a glance, fermentation appears to be a pretty simple process. There's yeast, which we added to the dough, and this yeast eats away at the sugar in the dough, producing gas as a byproduct, which is what lifts the dough. But it's not that simple. There's actually quite a lot going on. Let's start with just flour and water. Even without yeast involved, mixing flour and water together sparks the beginning of many processes. The most obvious would be the formation of gluten that will support the dough. Less obviously, enzymes in the flour begin to work. They break down the starches and proteins in the flour. Flour contains a lot of starches, which are just basically chains made up of smaller, simpler sugars connected. When the enzymes chop them up, these turn into simple sugars, which the yeast are able to easily eat and thus promote fermentation. And on another front, a similar process that happens to the flour's proteins help increase gluten extensibility so we get dough that's easier to handle. These are all great benefits to our dough. The only drawback to getting them is time. To fully reap these benefits, we have to let the mixed flour and water sit for a good while, enough time for the flour to fully hydrate. This is what the Autolyse method is. It isn't even fermentation yet, but you can already see the benefit time has on the mix. Now let's throw yeast into the mix. The yeast is the main workforce of all of our baking business. They eat away at sugars in the dough, whether it's the table sugar you add or the ones broken down from the flour. They also contain enzymes that can help them break down even more sugars. After consuming sugar, they release carbon dioxide and alcohol as byproducts. Carbon dioxide is a gas that fills the dough and the alcohol mostly evaporates when we bake the bread in the oven. This fermentation process though, doesn't really produce a lot of flavor in long fermented breads. Instead, it's mostly the side reactions happening during fermentation that cause the flavor. When the ethanol or alcohol the yeast produces interacts with other molecules in the dough, that creates compounds that add aroma and flavor to the bread. The purpose of long fermentation is to give more time for those reactions to happen. You know, if you look at the specific compounds that make up the flavor or aroma of bread, you'll find that there are a lot of them, literally hundreds. Quite a lot are produced when we're baking the dough and a lot are churned out during this fermentation period. Which is why it makes a lot of sense for breads with long fermentation times to taste so much better. There's just more time to create flavor and aroma molecules.
With breads that have short fermentation times, the dough has already been baked before it even gets the chance to go through all these chemical reactions, which is very practical when you're in a rush, but naturally not ideal for flavor development. So, as mentioned before, modern commercial mass-produced breads require enzymes and other additives to be added to the dough before they're baked. There are also many who claim that long fermentation makes healthier breads because it allows for more breakdown of the flour in the bread, making it easier to digest. Regardless of whether this is true or not, we have found long fermentation to taste vastly superior to breads with short fermentation in general. Long fermented breads normally also vary quite greatly in appearance from short fermented bread. A lot of the bread that have been fermented quickly look very pale and white in crust and crumb. Due to modern processing, these breads are normally mixed using a machine heavily, then quickly fermented and baked, whereas breads fermented for longer periods of time are much darker and typically have a more complex coloring, with golden and creamy hues. There's a reason for this, and it's actually due to the yeast. Well, specifically, how the yeast reacts to oxygen. You remember what I said about fermentation before, that the yeast eats away at the sugars and releases carbon dioxide and alcohol? Well, that's not quite the full story. Fermentation is an anaerobic process, meaning it doesn't require oxygen. The yeast will switch to it when oxygen is not available, but when oxygen is available, the yeast prefers a different method to get energy. This is called aerobic respiration, and it takes in sugar and oxygen, producing carbon dioxide and water as its byproducts. This process does not produce alcohol, so it misses out on a lot of the flavor-producing reactions that occur in fermentation. However, this process produces a lot more energy for the yeast than the fermentation reaction, allowing the yeast to speed up their growth and cut short the bread-making time. This can be a benefit, especially in mass production bakeries, where the goal is to get out as many loaves of bread as quickly as possible. That's why many of these places heavily mix the bread dough using a stand mixer, mixing and kneading forces air oxygen into the dough. When bread dough is made like this, it becomes very pale due to oxidization. It also results in a lot of oxygen being available to the yeast. Due to the respiration process I mentioned earlier, it results in the yeast very quickly multiplying and the bread rising very fast. The caveat is that there's very little flavor produced. After all, there's no alcohol creating flavor molecules, nor is there enough time for the flour to fully hydrate. While this bread is quick, easy, and convenient, it's impossible to deny that it can lack a lot of the flavor really good bread has. Okay, so now that we know that long fermentation is a good thing, let's apply it to our bread recipes. After all, knowing that something is good is one thing, but applying it is another. Long fermentation is fantastic, but long baking sessions may not always be convenient or even possible. So here are some simple tips and ways to get long fermentation into a recipe in a convenient way. Well, to start with, we can cut down on the amount of yeast used. To prolong the fermentation time easily, you could just cut down on the yeast you're using. You'll have less yeast to start with, which will naturally lengthen the fermentation process. Note though that if the bread recipe has table sugar, your yeast may still ferment the dough faster than expected. Table sugar is a simple sugar that yeast can consume, and so it has the effect of giving a boost to the yeast. You could also switch the kind of yeast or yeast starter you're using. Instant yeast or dry yeast is a very condensed form of yeast. What you get in just a few teaspoons is a lot compared to what you get for the same amount in other fresher sources of yeast. For example, sourdough or our free yeast water. These starters normally contain less yeast right off the bat, so they ferment much slower. They also frequently contain other kinds of cultures that improve the quality of the bread. For example, sourdough famously has wild lactic acid bacteria that makes the bread sour in taste. Fruit yeast water also contains wild cultures that improve the fermentation process and give more flavor. Aside from changing the ingredients, another thing you can do to lengthen fermentation is adjust the temperature of the dough. Yeast has an optimum temperature range that they work best in. Outside of this range, they're not so effective. What we want to do is stall the yeast production so we can lower the temperature by putting the entire dough into the fridge. At cool temperatures, the yeast works at a much slower pace. Please note it's still fermenting, but just very, very slowly. 
All right, these are all good tips, but what about if we don't really want to make an entire bowl of dough that takes hours to ferment, taking up space in the fridge or on the counter? Well, there's another easy way to get the benefits of long fermentation without fermenting large batches of dough. We could make pre-ferments instead. Pre-ferments are basically portions of the full dough that we make in advance and leave to ferment before adding them into the dough. So you take some of the flour, water, and yeast of a bread recipe, then mix it, leave it to long ferment to get all the benefits, and finally just add it to the main dough. For more information on pre-ferment, you can check out our previous video on it, but what I've mentioned is the basic understanding of pre-ferment. We use this technique a lot to make good bread without a lot of hassle. It's so quick and easy, just a great way to get good bread. To complement long fermentation, you can try out different gluten development methods. Instead of kneading the dough by hand or stand mixer, you could try using the stretch and fold methods or the other no knead methods. If you recall what I mentioned earlier about how the dough, when heavily kneaded or mixed, ends up oxidized and pale, these no knead or stretch and fold methods are in a direct contrast to that. These methods don't fold a lot of oxygen into the dough, so they work really well with long fermentation, and they also make it a lot easier to structure your time around the long fermentation. We have a video on how these methods work, you can check it out for more information. Of course, if you just want to try out a long fermentation recipe, we also have a lot on our channel. Give them a shot if you just like a ready-made recipe with long fermentation. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and bye!